quick demo of this video tutorial. This is a mean stack beginners tutorial. In this tutorial, we will develop a mean stack application from scratch to implement CRUD operations, insert, update, and delete. In order to insert a new employee, you can do this. Now click on submit. So here we have inserted a new employee. Inserted employees will be listed inside this table here. In order to update a record, you can click on this pencil icon here. Instead of UK, I will update London. Now click on submit. So here you can see the post message updated successfully. Here we have updated in this table list also. So these employee records are inserted into this employees collection in MongoDB here. If you want to delete a record, you can click on this delete icon here. It will ask for confirmation. Are you sure to delete this record or not? Click on OK. So here we have deleted the record for Fiona Green. So from this tutorial, you can learn how to develop an enterprise application in MeanStack. So please watch till the end of this video tutorial. Hopefully in the next videos, we will discuss how to do user registration, login and logout using JWT also authentication and role management also what's up youtube welcome to dotnet mob in this video i will show you how to implement cred operations in mean stack application before starting this video tutorial i would like to ask you a favor if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video if you are new here please be subscribed to this channel dotnet mob so here is my vs code editor i will be using this ide for the application development you can use any ide as you wish Basically, in MeanStack application, we will have Node.js API in server side and as a server, we will use npm package express. For database, we will use NoSQL MongoDB. And finally, we will have the client side. It will be implemented in Angular 5. Before starting this project, we have to ensure that we have a working MeanStack development environment. First of all, we need Node.js itself. For that, you can go to this website nodejs.org. Then you have to download the installation file as per your operating system. In my case, I have Windows operating system with 64-bit. So we have to download either of these two files. Here we have the stable version and here we have the beta version. Better download the stable version 8.11.1. Node.js installation is so simple. You can complete the installation process by pressing a bunch of next buttons in the installation wizard. After installation, just open command prompt. Then type the command node space minus v. Hit enter. So here you can see the latest installed version in my system. I have already installed Node.js 8.11.1. After Node.js, we have MongoDB. First of all, go to this website mongodb.com. Then click on download here. Then go to community server. Then select the installation file as per your operating system. In my case, I have Windows. So I can download this MSI installer file. Installation of MongoDB is also simple. You just need to go through few next buttons. After installation, we need to start MongoDB. For that, we need to know the installation directory where we have installed MongoDB. In my case, I have Windows operating system. So it will be there in programs files. So here is my C drive. Inside that we have programs file. And here we have the MongoDB folder, server 3.6 bin folder here we can see the file mongod.exe in order to start the server we have to run this application from our command prompt so let's look how we can do that in order to start the mongodb we have to navigate inside this folder for that in command prompt you have to run this cd command after running this command we will be inside this uh, folder directory here bin folder from there, we have to run this mongod.exe file using this command. In order to run this file, we have to pass this command line argument db path. Here we have a folder path to a folder mongo-data. You can name the folder and you can keep the folder anywhere you wish. Basically, inside this folder, mongodb will store the files related to the database that we have created. Okay, in my case, it is here mongo-dot-data. So whenever we want to work with MongoDB, we have to start the server using these two commands here. In order to make the process more simple, I have saved these two commands in a notepad, then 
go to file then save as then name the file here finally you have to add the extension .bat then click on save in my case I have already saved this file in my desktop you just need to double click on this file so that it will start the mongodb so here we have started the mongodb with this batch file so here we have installed and started mongodb server now we need a management tool in order to work with mongodb in latest versions of mongodb it comes with a default management tool here it is mongodb compass or you can use this uh, software robo mongo okay so in my case i will be using this one default management tool mongodb compass community double click on it in order to connect with mongodb we have a connection wizard here it is already filled with default configurations since we have no change from default configuration you just need to click on this connect button here as a first step towards the application development let's create a database for that you can click on this create database button here then you have to name the database i will name this database as cred db to create a database in mongodb compass management tool we need to have at least one collection so i will name the collection as employees okay if you are not familiar with no sql database collection means tables in sql database Table rows in SQL database is treated as a record in NoSQL database. Column in SQL database is treated as a field in NoSQL DB. So here we have the collection employees. Inside that we will have a number of records related to each employee. Now let's create the database. Click on create database. So here we have the newly created DB for now we don't have any record inside this employees collection now back to required softwares for mean stack app development here we have the angular cli for angular 5 development we need to install angular cli in order to install the package you can use this command npm install minus g then angular cli so that's it here we have a mean stack app development environment now back to vs code editor First of all, we will create a server-side app with Node.js. After that, we will implement the client-side using Angular 5. So I am going to create a mean stack application from scratch inside this project folder. So first of all, we have to open this folder in my VS Code editor. So let me copy this folder path from here. Then back to the VS Code. Then go to File. Open Folder. Then paste the directory here. Hit Enter. Then click on Select Folder. Now let me create a new folder for Node.js application. I will name this folder as Node.js. Then go to this folder Node.js. We have to open command prompt inside this folder directory. For that you can use the shortcut hold shift. Then right click on mouse. Then click on this open command window here. In order to create a Node.js application. First of all we have to have a package.json file in order to create the package.json file you can use this command npm init hit enter then it will ask configuration details about the project package name will be node.js hit enter then version description entry point test command leave it as it is hit enter so here we have created a package.json file it is filled with this default configuration is this ok type yes here then hit enter so you can see the newly created package.json file here in order to work with this node.js application we need some npm packages we need npm package express to act as a server then we need mongoose it will act as a mongodb orm finally we have body parser it allows us to send json data to node.js api so let's install these packages npm install first of all we have express mongoose after that we have body hyphen parser now we need to save these dependencies inside package.json file for that you can do this hyphen hyphen save hit enter so here we have successfully installed these three packages mongoose express body parser now let's start coding inside this application we have already created a mongodb cred db here now we are going to connect the database from this node.js project 
for that i'm going to create a new file here i will name this file as db.js in order to connect mongodb we will use npm package mongoose that we have already installed so first of all we need a request statement for mongoose so here it is here we have a constant mongoose it requires mongoose package after that we can make the connection using the object mongoose by calling this function connect as a parameter for this function we can pass the mongodb connection details here we have mongodb protocol then localhost we have installed this package inside this default port number 27017 after that we have the database name cred db after the mongodb connection we can call a callback function like this it has a single parameter err it stores possible errors while connecting the database if there is no error we will print this message into console window mongodb connection succeeded if there is any error we will print this message error in db connection with detailed error object we have called this json stringify function in order to convert this object into a string with indentation of two space character most of the case we need to establish mongodb connection outside this db.js file so we need to export this constant mongoose for that we can do this module.exports is equal to mongoose now let me save this file then open command prompt here in order to run this db.js file we can do this node space db.js hit enter sorry here we have created this db.js file outside this node.js folder now let me move this file into this node.js folder then back to command prompt let me run this command again hit enter so here you can see the message mongodb connection succeeded now if we change something inside this node.js project we have to rerun this application inside this command prompt using this node command I'm going to add two more dots at the end of this MongoDB connection succeeded message. In order to see these updates, you have to rerun this application. For that, use the shortcut Ctrl C twice, then run the command again. So here we have the updated dots. Now let's check how we can avoid this execution restart after application update. For that, we have to install this npm package nodemon. In order to install this package globally inside your system, you can use this command npm install minus g then node mod. Now let's look how we can use node mod. Now let me quit the current execution. For that, you can use the shortcut control C twice, then run this application using node mod instead of node, node mod, then db.js. Hit enter. So here we have started this node.js project using node mod. From now onwards, we don't want to restart this execution after any updates inside this Node.js project. Let me remove these two dots from here, then let me save this. So here you can see that Nodemon already restarted the application for new changes. Now let's create the root JavaScript file index.js. First of all, we need request statement for express and body parser so here it is here we have a constant for express and one for body parser also in order to make a connection with mongodb we have to execute this db.js module for that we can add one more required statement for db.js file here it is always recommended to separate local import and package import like this so here we have a constant mongoose it will store the mongoose that we have exported inside this db.js file. Here we have used destructuring syntax from ES6. Suppose if you have an object O with these properties P and Q in order to retrieve value of these properties into a local variable P and Q, you just need to use this destructuring syntax like this. So that is what we have done inside this project also inside this db.js file here we have exported mongoose property in order to retrieve that we have used mongoose with destructuring syntax with this import we will establish a connection with mongodb in order to work with express package we have to call this core function express like this so here we have called the express function result will be saved inside this app variable here 
Now we have to configure express middleware in order to send JSON data to this Node.js project. For that we can do this. We just need to call this app.use function. Inside that we can pass the result of this function execution body parser.json. Now in order to start the express server we can call the function app.listen as a first parameter we have to pass the port number where we want to start this application. After starting the server this callback function will be invoked. Inside that we have a message for console window server started at port number 3000. Now let me save this index.js file then open command prompt here. I want to run this application using nodemon nodemon space index.js hit enter. So here we have started the express server at port number 3000 and we have successfully connected to MongoDB. Now we are going to implement CRUD operations insert, update, delete and read or view using post, update, delete and get web methods respectively. For that first of all we have to create a model using mongoose package. So let me create a models folder here models Inside that I will create a new file employee.js. First of all we need a request statement for mongoose. So here it is here we have a constant mongoose for mongoose package. Now let's create the model employee. For that we can call the function mongoose.model. Inside that first of all we have to pass the model name employee here. After that we have to specify the schema or structure of our model. So inside this application we will implement CRUD operations using employee details like name, position, office and salary and here we have specified the corresponding field types. All of these fields will be string except the salary field. Finally we have to export this employee like this module.exports is equal to employee. Now in order to insert new employee record into MongoDB we just need to create an object of employee and call the function save from the object. It will insert the new record into this employees collection that we have already created. So we have not specified in order to insert the record into this employees collection anywhere inside this model. By default mongoose will insert the new record into a collection with name employees. So it will use the plural version of model name that we have passed it here. You don't have to create the collection manually in management tool like we do in SQL databases. Mongoose will automatically create the collection as per our model. Without using the plural version of this model name you can pass a third parameter here suppose I want to use a collection with name EMP for this employee. So we can pass EMP as a third parameter here. For now we will use the employees collection. Now it's time to implement actual CRUD operations insert update delete and retrieve. For that I'm going to create a new folder controllers here. Controllers. Inside that we need to create a new employee controller. Employee controller dot js inside this employee controller we need to implement router from express for that first of all we can add the require statement for express and then here we have created a local variable for express router by calling this router function from express constant inside this employee controller we may need to work with mongoose model employee that we have created here so let's add a request statement for this employee model also. So here we have the request statement and inside this employee variable we will store the exported employee from this file. Now let me add a router in order to retrieve all employees from this employees collection. For that we can create a get request here. So here we have the route for this get request. When user make this request we will call this function with these two parameters request and response. Inside the function we need to retrieve all records from this employees collection. For that employees.find function can be called. It will retrieve all the employees from this employees collection. After retrieving all those records we will call this callback function with these two parameters error and docs. So first of all we will check if there is any error or not. If there is no error we will return the documents that we have received from this employees collection back to the response. 
For that we have called this send function from this response object by passing these documents that we have retrieved. If there is any error, we will print this message in console window error in retrieving employees and here we have concatenated the stringified version of the error object that we have received inside this callback function. Like this get request, we have to add few more routes inside this employee controller. So we have to configure these routes inside the root file index.js. For that we have to export the router object that we have created here. Module.exports is equal to router. Now back to index.js file here. First of all we have to add a request statement for the employee controller that we have added here. So here we have the request statement for the controller with this employee controller variable. Now in order to add router from employees controller into this application we can do this. We will call the middleware function app.use and we have the base URL for this controller employee. So basically in order to execute this get request we have to make a get request like this localhost 3000 forward slash employees. In order to access routers from this employees controller, we have to append this employees to the base URL localhost 3000. Now let me append list into this router. Then in order to make this get request, we can do this employees forward slash list. So here we have appended employees to the base URL and then here we have the route that we have specified here. For now we don't need this list. We will keep a single forward slash for retrieving all employees from the collection. Now let me save all of these files here. Sorry inside this model we have a small modification. We have to export an object like this employee is equal to employee. Since we have same identifier on both sides, we can use the ES6 shorthand method. We just need to pass employee here. Now let me save all of these files here. Then you don't have to restart the program inside the node mode. It will automatically restart after making any update inside this node.js project. Now let me try to make this request inside the browser. Let me copy this. And let me open one more tab here hit enter so basically with this get request it will retrieve all the employees from this employees collection unfortunately we don't have any record inside this employees collection so that is why we have an empty array here so next we are going to insert new employee record into the db collection for that we can define one more route with post request like this URI for this post request will be same as that of this get request here. In order to make this post request, you can use the same URI like we have done in get request. During this post request, we will call this function with these two parameters request and response. First of all, we have to create an object of employee model class like this. So here we have created an object of employee model class as EMP. Inside that we have filled details of the employee from the request body. Basically for this post request we will send a JSON data containing details of new employee. So using that JSON data we have filled details of employees using request.body object. So in order to retrieve the value of name property from the send JSON data we can do this request.body.name. In the same way we have retrieved other properties also. So here we have created an object of mongoose model employee as EMP. It is filled with details of new employee. Now in order to insert the new record into mongodb we can call this save function from the mongoose model object. After saving the record it will call this callback function with these two parameters error and document. So if there is any error it will be passed through this parameter. If the operation is successful MongoDB will return an object containing details of newly inserted employee with these properties using this dog parameter. Along with these properties it will have an extra property underscore id. MongoDB will use this underscore id property to uniquely identify a record from a collection. It's like primary key in SQL databases. 
but it won't be in a sequence like 1, 2, 3. Instead, instead it will be a 24 hex character string in length. So first of all, inside this callback function, we will check if there is any error or not. If there is no error, we will return the newly inserted dog back to the response. If there is any error, we will print this message into console window, error in employee save with the detailed error object. Now let me save this file, NodeMon will automatically restart the program here. Now we have to make this POST request. We can't make the POST request from the browser like we do for GET requests. For that we have to use a special software like Postman. So in my system I have installed Postman as an extension for Google Chrome browser. Inside that here I am going to make a POST request. We can select post from this drop down then here we are going to make a post request into this URL. So that we can copy this URL from here itself. URL will be same as that of get request. So let me copy this and pasting here. Now open body then select draw. We are going to send a JSON data here. So here it is. Here we have an employee details of Ashton Cox. Position will be senior developer office London. Then we have salary. Now click on send here. So here you can see the response from the Node.js application here. So here we have the details of new employee that we have passed through this request. And here we have the underscore ID from MongoDB for this new record. Now let's check MongoDB for this new record. So here we have the employees collection. Just click on this refresh button here. So here we have the new record for Ashton Cox. So now we have a record inside this employees collection. Now let me make this previous get request. It should return all the employees from the employees collection. So let me reload this page here. So here we have the newly inserted employee details. In your browser you may not see this much indentation for the response. In my system I have installed JSON formatter. So that's the reason we see this much indentation here. In your browser you may see this response like this. Now I am going to add one more get request into this application so that it will return a specific employee with given underscore id. If we pass this id we can retrieve this whole employee details. For that we are going to make a get request like this forward slash employees then id that we have saved here. For that back to the VS code editor. Now let's make a get request here. So here it is router.get and here we have the URI for this route. In order to make this get request along with this URI you have to pass the id underscore id for the corresponding employee record. When we make this get request we will call this function with these two parameters request and response like we have done for the previous routes. First of all we have to make sure that the id passed through the uri should be a valid mongodb id. For that first of all we have to import object id from mongoose as we have done here. First of all we will check whether the id is valid or not. In order to retrieve the value of this id from uri you can do this request object dot params then id. So here we can check whether this id is valid or not. For that we just need to call this function is valid from this object id. If it is not a valid id we can return status code 400 and we will send the message no record with given id. If the given id is valid we can retrieve the corresponding employee from the db. For that we just need to do this employee.find by id. Here we have used the function find and here we have used find by id. So first parameter should be the id that we have received through this uri here. As a second parameter we can pass this callback function with these two parameters error and doc. If there is no error we will return the document back to the response. If there is any error we will print the error message in console window. Now let me save this. Now let's try to make this get request. So here we have the id for this new employee. Let me copy this. 
replacing this id here then hit enter so here we have the employee details of the newly inserted employee so here we have the employee details with given id now we have to add two more routes for update and delete now let's try update operation for that we have to use put web method so here it is router dot put function can be called and here we have the route forward slash id parameter as a second parameter we will call the function with these parameters request and response inside the function first of all we will check the id passed through the uri is valid or not like we have done inside this get request here okay if the id is not valid we will return the message no record with given id if the id is valued we can continue with update operation for that first of all we will create an object like this during update operation we will send a json data containing new details of employees with that json we have created a normal object here it's not an object of the employee model that we have done in post request instead it is a normal object emp now in order to update the employee with given id here we can do this for that we need to call the function find by id and update as a first parameter we have to pass the id that we have received from this uri here then we have to do this it tells the mongodb we have to update an employee with this id with these new informations inside this object as a third parameter we can pass an object with options like this i will tell you what we meant by this property here later as a last parameter we will call the callback function like we do in other mongoose operations so here we have the callback function with error and dog parameter inside that we will check if there is any error or not if there is no error we will return the dog back to the response if there is any error we will print an error message in console window so with this new option we test the mongodb whether we want to return all data of employee or updated data of employee back to the response so if new is equal to true this callback parameter dog will have the value of updated employee details otherwise it will have the old value of the corresponding employee finally we have delete operation for that we can add a new route like this router dot delete function for this route we have the uri like this so when we make a request delete request like this we can call this function with these two parameters request and response inside the function first of all we will check whether the id passed through this uri is valid or not otherwise we will delete the record by calling this function find by id and remove so first parameter should be the id for that we can do this request dot params dot id after delete operation we will call this callback function inside that we can do this if there is no error we will return the deleted employee details back to the response otherwise we will print the error message in console window so here we have completed with node.js project inside that we have implemented all crud operations using put post delete and update now let's create angular application for that we can use angular cli commands in command prompt since we have already opened two command windows for mongodb and node.js application i'm going to use integrator terminal from this ide for that you can go to view then integrator terminal here in order to create an angular 5 application you can use this command ng new then application name i will name this application as angular app hit enter so here we have successfully created a client side application as part of that here we have a folder angular app inside that we have a brand new angular 5 application now let's run this application for that first of all we have to navigate inside this folder so we can use the cd command cd angular app hit enter in order to run an angular application you can use this command ng serve double hyphen open hit enter so it will compile and open your application in your default browser so this is how the fresh angular application looks like 
by default angular applications uses this port number 4200 in order to design this application we will be using materialized css for that we have to include these references style sheet and javascript file in our application along with that we need few icons for that we will use material icons so back to the application here then open index.html here so first of all we have the style sheet for materialized css after that we have style sheet for material icons before the body end tag we can add script file for materialized css now open styles.css inside this style sheet we can add global css rules for the application for now i will copy paste the required css rules for this application development inside this style sheet so here it is now let's create required components model and service classes inside this application for that we need one more terminal so you can click on this plus button here then navigate into the angular application folder angular app now in order to create angular component you can use this angular cli command ng g4 generate c4 component i will name this component as employee hit enter newly created component can be seen inside this app folder here now we need to add one model and service class for that inside this app folder i'm going to add one more folder i will name this folder as shared now open one terminal from this folder for that right click on this folder then open in command prompt here now let's create a model class for that you can use this command ng g4 generate and we need to create a class in angular cli there is no specific command to create a model in angular application but we can create the model class by adding few tweaks inside this class generation command here we are going to create the employee model class so i will name it as employee then we have to add this command line argument type is equal to model hit enter newly created model class can be seen here employee.model.ts after that we need to create a service class also for that you can use this command ng g4 generate s4 service we need to create employee service class so i will just need to type employee here hit enter now we can start with employee model class so here it is employee.model.ts inside this model class we need to add properties corresponding to these mongodb collection fields so we can add these properties here id name position office and salary now open employee service class first and foremost i'm going to add import statement for this service class here here we have added import statements for angular core packages and rxdx along with that we have imported employee module from this employee.model.ts file here now let's create two variables inside the service class so first of all we have selected employee it's of the type employee model class and here we have an array of employee as employees so inside this employees array we will save all employees from the mongodb collection with this selected employee property we will design a form for insert and update operation that we can do in employee component html default design of angular application is rendered here and this view is rendered from the default component html which is app component html here so i'm going to remove these default html codes from here instead i will use the employee component selector so here is the component type script file i will use this selector let me copy this then back to app component.html and i will add a tag with this selector here now let me save all of these modifications here then back to the browser here you see this angular application is already restarted whenever we make changes inside this angular application we don't need to use external packages like we have done in node.js with node mode angular cli watch files inside this angular application whenever we make a changes inside them it will restart the program here so here we have the paragraph employee works from employee component html now inside this component we are going to design a form using the property employee selected employee from employee service class 
So first of all, we have to inject employee service class inside this employee component TypeScript file. Here we have the TypeScript file employee.component.ts. For that, first of all, we have to add an import statement for employee service class. So first of all, let me add a line break here so that we can separate local import and built-in import. So here we have the import statement import employee service from shared folder employee service.ts file. In order to inject the service class, we have to add the class inside the component providers array. For that, we can do this. Here we have the providers array. Inside that, we have employee service. After that, we need to add a constructor parameter for employee service like this private employee service. It's of the type employee service class. Now let me save this file then back to employee component.html file. Now we can design a form using this employee service property selected employee here. We will wrap the employee form inside a card component from materialize CSS. We can see examples for card component here. Now back to VS Code editor. Now let's replace this default paragraph with a card component. So first of all, we have a div with class row and here we have the grid system from materialize CSS. It is almost similar to bootstrap grid system. Inside that we have a div with class card. Inside that we have another div with class card content. Apart from that, we have one more class white hyphen text. So this will apply white color for text inside this div. Inside that we have a div row. Now we can use grid system from material as CSS. We want to divide this div into two parts with five columns and seven columns. So here we have the first div and second div. Inside this div, this first div, we will design the employee form inside the second div. We will show employees list that we have inserted into the MongoDB collection here. So first of all, I will design employee form inside this div. So here we have the form. Form. Here we have the local reference. Employee form is equal to ng form. And here we have wired up the submit event using ng submit attribute. It will call this function on submit and we will pass the local reference employee form into that function. Inside the form, first of all, I will add a hidden field. Inside this control, we will store the object ID from MongoDB. So I will name this control as underscore ID. Then we have the local reference underscore ID is equal to ng model. And finally, we have to add the two way data binding here. ng model is equal to employee service. That means injected object of employee service inside this component here. Then we have selected employee inside this employee service class and inside that we have the property underscore ID from employee model here. Now we need to add input text box for remaining properties for that you can see some examples from the materialized CSS documentation here. We will be using label text box pair like this. We have the label here and we have the text box here. Now back to the VS Code editor. First of all, we need to add a div with class row. Inside that, we will have another div with classes input field called S12. So it will take the entire width inside this div row. Then we have to add input control like this. Input, it's of the type text. We can use this control to enter employee full name. So I will add the name property here name is equal to name and then here we have the local reference name is equal to ng model then we have the two-way data binding ng model is equal to employee service dot selected employee dot name so here we are designing this form using template driven approach after the ng model we have to add placeholder placeholder is equal to enter full name after that we have to add the label here so here it is label inside that we have name i want to make this input text box as mandatory to indicate the mandatory fields we will use a red asterisk mark for that i will add a nested label inside this name label so here it is here we have a label with class red text so this asterisk mark will have red color we can add label text box per for remaining properties position office and salary for that we can do this 
So here we have the label text box pair for position and then we have label text box pair for office. Then finally we have the salary text box. So here we have designed employee form using template driven approach. In order to work this approach, we have to add forms module inside app module.ts file. So first of all, we can add the import statement for forms module here, import forms module from angular forms. Now we can add this forms module inside the imports array here. Now let me save all of these modifications and back to the application here. Boom. That's it. Here we have an employee form as per our design. Now we need to add a submit button and reset button into this form. For that, back to the component HTML here. In order to add these buttons, we can add one more div before the form end tag here. So here it is. We have a div with class row and we have another div with input field called S12. Inside that we have two buttons. This is for reset operation and this is for the form submit button. For these two buttons we have classes btn from materialize css. Then we have the custom class which we have defined inside the styles.css btn hyphen custom. In order to align these two buttons in the right side we have added this right class. Now let me save this and back to the application here. So here we have added submit and reset button. First of all I will implement form reset operation. For that back to the component type script file here employee component.ts. For that we will define reset form function here. It has a single parameter form it's of the type ng form. In order to use this class we have to import import ng form from angular forms. We may need to call this reset form function from various parts of the application. In some cases we cannot pass value for this form parameter. So that is why we made this parameter as nullable. So first of all we will check whether we have a value for this form parameter. If value for this parameter is passed we can reset this form by calling the reset function like this form dot reset. After that we have to manually reset these form controls since we have designed this form using selected employee property from employee service class. We can do this. This dot employee service dot selected employee. Here we have set the selected employee property with an object containing empty or null value for those properties id name position office and salary now we can call this reset form function inside this ng on it lifecycle hook ng on it lifecycle hook will be invoked whenever this component is fully loaded so initially it would be better if we can reset this form here for that we can do this this dot reset form from this ng on a life cycle hook we can't pass value for this form parameter here. So let me save this and back to the application here. Now we can wire up this reset form function to this reset button click event. For that you can open the component html here. Then we will add a click event for this reset button here. So here it is. We will call the reset form function into that function. We will pass the local reference for this form here. Okay. Now let me save this and back to the application here. Now let's check how this reset operation works. For that I will enter some random text inside these text boxes here. Now click on reset button here. So here we have successfully reset this form into its initial state. Now let's implement form validation. As we mentioned employee full name is a required field for this form submission. So that is why we have added a red asterisk mark here. In order to make this text box as required field we have to add required attribute into the corresponding input text box here. So we can add required attribute here. Required. Now let me save this and back to the application here. We can implement form validation using ng classes from Angular. Initially if you inspect this text box here. You can see that it has classes ng pristine and ng invalid. ng pristine means we have not modified its initial value. ng invalid class indicates that this field is already invalid. 
Now keep an eye on these classes here while we update this text box. You can see that its classes are modified. ng pristine is replaced with ng dirty and ng invalid is replaced with ng valid. If I clear this text box, we can see that it has two classes ng dirty and ng invalid. We are not looking at ng touched class. Currently, we have ng dirty and ng invalid class applied to this text box. So that is why we have a red bottom border for this text box. We have defined this style inside the styles.css file here. If there is any input with these two classes ng invalid and ng dirty, we will apply the bottom red border. Now back to the application. Whenever this form as a whole is not valid, I want to disable this submit button. So disabled attribute will be applied whenever this form as a whole is not valid. Employee form is the local reference for this form here. Now let me save this and back to the application here. Initially this text box is empty and thereby this form as a whole is not valid. So we have applied disabled attribute to this submit button. If I enter something inside this text box, you can see that this submit button is enabled. Now let's implement the form submit event. We have already added a function to this form submit event here. ng submit, we will call this function on submit. Now we have to define this function inside the corresponding TypeScript file here on submit function for this function we have a single parameter form it's of the type ng form inside this on submit function we have to insert a new employee into mongodb for that we need to consume post request from the node.js api here so inside this employee controller in our node.js api we have created this post route we need to consume this post route from this angular application here from this employee component in order to consume the post request we will create a function inside this employee service class i will name this function as post employee for this function we have a single parameter emp it's of the type employee model class in order to make the post request, we have to make an HTTP request into the Node.js project. For that, we can use HTTP client. So, first of all, we have to inject this HTTP client inside this constructor here. Private HTTP, it's of the type HTTP client. In order to work with HTTP client, we have to import HTTP client module inside this app module.ts file. So first of all, I will add the import statement for HTTP client module and then I will add this class inside this imports array here. Now back to employee service class here. Now we need to make the post request into employees route. For that, let me create a read only variable here. So here we have the base URL variable. It is initialized with the URI for the employee controller in our node.js project. Now we can make a post request for that we just need to call the post function from HTTP client object. As a first parameter we have to pass the URI so here it is then after that we have to pass the JSON object EMP containing details of new employee. So here we have returned the result of this post function back to the caller so basically you can see that this post function returns an observable here so we can call this function inside the employee component.ts file here now inside this component typescript file we can call this employee service function post employee for that we can do this this dot employee service dot post employee into this function we have to pass an object of employee containing details of new employee for that we can do this here we have the form object in order to retrieve value of form elements we can do this form dot value so it will be an object of employee itself as i told you this function post employee will return an observable so we can subscribe to that observable here 
inside the subscribe function we can define a callback function like this it has a single parameter response so it will have the response returned from the node.js project so first of all inside this function after inserting a new record i want to reset the form for that we can call this reset form function by passing this employee form object now i want to show a toast notification saying insertion is successful for that we can use toast from this material i css go to javascript there you can see toast here in order to make a toast request we just need to do this m dot toast inside that we can pass this html object okay now in order to make use of this m object inside this angular application first of all we have to declare m before this component decoration here so here it is here we have declared m it's of the type any now back to the function here now we can make a toast request like this m dot toast here we have the html saved success in order to apply round border you can use this class rounder now let me save all of these modification and back to the application here as you know we have a node.js project running at port number 3000 in order to retrieve all employees we can make this get request from this angular application we are going to consume a post request from this node.js project where we have a problem in order to make the request we have to enable course inside the node.js project course means cross origin resource sharing that means without course enabling any web application node.js or any web application will block request from another web application which is hosted in a different domain or port number now in order to interact with this angular and node.js project we have to enable course inside this node.js project for that first of all we have to install this npm package course so back to the command prompt here currently it is running node mode let me stop this execution for that you can use the shortcut ctrl c then type y in order to install the package you can use this command npm install course and we have to save this package in our package.json file so we have double dash save hit enter so here we have successfully installed the course package now back to the node.js project here open index.js file inside this file first of all we have to add the request statement for course package so here it is after that we can use the middleware function app.use for that we can do this app.use inside that we have passed this function course so this will allow requests from any port number or domain we have to be specific we need to allow request from this angular application which is running as port number 4200 in order to enable course for the angular application we can pass an object inside this function like this so here we have the origin property inside that we have to enable course for this port number which is running at local host okay now let me save this and back to the application here now let me save these modifications here then back to the command prompt now we need to run this node.js project using node mode now back to this uh, angular application here i'm going to insert a new employee here i will name this employee as fiona green then we have position it will be junior developer then office will be in Canada and we have salary click on submit so here you can see the toast notification saved successfully now if you check this MongoDB here now we are inside the employees collection click on refresh button here so here you can see the new record for Fiona Green now inside this second div here I want to display all employees from this employees collection here for that back to the angular application here then open employee component html here inside this div we can add a table to list employees in order to design the table i will use the employees array from employee service class here okay we have already injected this employee service inside the employee component typescript file here so we can make use of that 
array inside this HTML here. For that, first of all, we will add a table here. For this table, we will apply two classes from materialize CSS. So first of all, we have responsive table. After that, we have highlight class. Inside the table, first of all, we will add the table header. For that, we have t-head. Inside that, we need a row with columns for each properties from the employees collection. After t-head, we can display exact content from employees collection. For that, we have a tr element here. Here you can see the ng4 directive here. It basically allows us to iterate through the employees array from employee service class with this emp variable. Okay, so using this emp variable, we can displace data from this employees collection. For that, we can do this. First of all, we have the employee name. In order to display employee full name, we have used string interpolation or one directional binding. After that, we have position and office. Here, inside this employees array from employee service class, we have to fetch all employee records from this employees collection. For that, we can define a new function inside this employee service class here. So function will be something like this get employee list here we have made a get request into this node.js project into this route here this one first route so it will return all employees from employees collection now we can call this function from this angular component employee component here. For that, I'm going to define a new function here. Function name will be refresh employee list. Inside the function, we can call this function get employee list. For that, we can do this. This dot employee service dot get employee list. It basically returns an observable from this get function here. So we can subscribe to that observable here. So we will call the subscribe function. Inside the subscribe function, we can define a callback function with a single parameter response now inside this response parameter we will have an array of records from this employees collection so we can assign that array into this employees array here for that we can do this this dot employee service dot employees is equal to response here you can see a red squiggly line because we are assigning an object into employees array so we have to cast this response as an employee array for that First of all, we have to add an import statement for employee model like this. Then we can cast this response like this as employee array. Now I will call this function inside the ng on a lifecycle hook here. This dot refresh employee list. Now let me save all of these modifications here. Then back to the application. So here you can see the employee list that we have inserted into this MongoDB collection. Now I want to add one more column into this table for some action buttons like edit and delete. So back to the component HTML file here. So first of all, I will add an empty column inside the table header like this. Then inside this TR element, we can add an extra TD like this. Inside that, we will add a button for delete operation like this. So it has a class, custom class action btn. It is defined inside the styles.css. Inside the element, we have a material icon for edit operation. So it will show a pencil icon. After that, we need to add an anger element for delete operation. So here it is. We have the custom class action btn. And here we have the material icons for delete operation. So it will be a trash icon. Now let me save this and back to the application here. So here you can see those two buttons here, edit and delete operation. Now let's implement the update operation. In order to update a record, you so want to click on this pencil button here. Then we will show the corresponding record details inside this form here. After making the update, then user can submit the form. So first of all, we have to implement the click event for this pencil button here. So let me add the click event here. When we click on this angle element, we will call this function on edit by passing this emp object from the iteration. Now let me define this function inside the TypeScript file here on edit. It has a single parameter emp. It's of the type employee model class. 
inside that we just need to set this employee object into the selected employee property of employee service class so that it will update this form with selected employee content so we can do this this dot employee service dot selected employee is equal to emp now let me save all of these modifications and back to the application here if i want to update this record for fiona green you can click on this pencil button here so here we have populated details of employee fiona green we can edit the employee details here then submit the form we have already implemented submit event for this form using this on submit function here so inside this function we have to deal with insert and update operation but we will decide whether we want to do update operation or insert operation based on the value of this input hidden field here underscore id if underscore id has an empty string then we will go for insert operation otherwise we will go for update operation for that we can add an if clause here form dot value dot underscore id if it is equal to empty string we will do the insert operation here in the else part we have to do the update operation for update operation we have to consume put route from node.js project in order to consume the request i'm going to add a new function inside this employee service class here so here we have the function put employee it has a single parameter emp it's of the type employee in order to consume the put route from node.js we can call the put function from http client object as a first parameter we will pass the uri here here we have concatenated underscore id into the base url like this as a second parameter we have passed the exact employee object now we can make use of this function inside this employee component typescript file here it would be same as that of this post employee function invocation so let me copy this and pasting inside this else part here then instead of this post employee we have put employee function inside this toast success function we can show updated successfully after insert or update operation we have to refresh this employee list inside this table for that we can call this function refresh employee list so we will do this this dot refresh employee list function can be called same function can be called inside this function also let me save all of these modifications here then back to the application I'm going to update this Fiona Green record. Now click on this pencil icon here. Then instead of Canada, I'm going to update that with UK. Click on submit. So here we have the success message updated successfully. Now back to the MongoDB Compass management tool. Here you can see the old office of Fiona as Canada. If you refresh this list, it should be updated to UK. Finally, we have to deal with employee delete operation. For that, we will be using this delete icon here. So we have to wire up an event for this button click event back to component HTML here. Then I will add a click event for this delete button here. We will call this on delete function. Into that function, we have to pass two parameters. First of all, we will pass the underscore ID for the MongoDB object. And then we will pass the form object employee form because we have to reset this form after any delete operation. Now we need to define a function inside this employee service class in order to consume delete route from node.js project. For that we can do this. We have the function delete employee. It has a single parameter underscore id. We will make this delete request by passing this url inside that we have appended this underscore id now back to the component typescript file here now we can define this on delete function here function name will be on delete it has two parameters underscore id then for delete operation is a loss of data so we have to confirm the operation from client side for that we can do this we will have an if close inside that we will confirm the operation by asking this question 
are you sure to delete this record or not if user confirm this operation it will return a true value so inside this if close we are safe to delete the record for that first of all we will call the function delete employee from this employee service class function into that function we have passed this underscore id value this function will return an observer so we can subscribe to that function here inside the subscribe function we will have a callback function with a single parameter response after deleting an employee we have to refresh this employee list here for that we can call the function refresh employee list then we will reset this form if there is an employee selected for update operation for that we can do this Re this dot reset form function can be called with this form object finally we have to show the toast message m dot toast inside that we will show this message deleted successfully now let me save all of these modifications then back to the application here i'm going to delete ashton cox record for that you can click on this trash icon here then it will ask for confirmation are you sure to delete this record click on ok so here we have successfully deleted the record if you check the mongodb compass tool you can refresh this list here so here we have deleted ashton cox record so with this mean sack application we have implemented crud operations hopefully in the next videos we will discuss how to do user registration login and logout using jwt user authentication and role management so let's wind up this mean stack tutorial for business you can download this project from the github link given in video description if you found this video helpful please thumbs up this video for awesome videos like this please be subscribe to this channel dot that mob please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this have a nice day bye